Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Play, we are beginning a series of videos on Spruance Leader, the Cold War fleet combat soldier strategy game from DVG and Dean Brown. Thank you to DVG for providing this copy for me to review and show off to you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run through, we're going to pick a campaign, I'm going to run through the setup for the campaign, show you how to set up the campaign tracks, the cards, the decks, we're going to outfit our task force, we're going to equip it with ordnance, and then we're going to go after some targets, go on some missions, and I'm going to go ahead and run through all of that. So this will be a multi-part series of videos, so you can kind of pick which part you want. Do you want to do, hey, I want to learn about setup, or if you say, hey, I'm, I'm familiar with the leader series, I know how to do campaign setups, you can go ahead and skip to more maybe the playthrough to see how the tactical aspect of Spruance Leader works. Um, whether you're trying to learn it for yourself or you just want to see it in action and, and go ahead and we're going to have some fun doing it. Um, I'll explain things as I go. I'll have graphics pop up, um, the usual stuff. So I think it's enough for the setup. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. All right, so in Spruance Leader, you're going to pick a campaign to start with. Now, there are multiple campaigns that come in the box. So you can pick everything from, you know, starting with North Atlantic skirmishes, Cold War 1988, you can go ahead and do Hold the Line, Cold War 1983. You could do Destroy the Kurov, Cold War 1988, which is more of a specialty one, as you can see. You need, they even have the Falklands Island War um, 1982 in here. So we're going to go ahead and pick North Atlantic Skirmishes, Cold War 1988. Now, this is considered an easy campaign. So you can, um, I would recommend you start with an easy one if it's the first time playing Spruance Leader. Now, just FYI, just because it is out there, the designer, Dean Brown, has released updated campaign sheets you do not need to use them however there there's sort of some balance changes these are I'm, and i'm gonna go ahead and use the ones from the box so no worries there you know you don't have to get the new ones generally though they fit the difficulty a little bit better so for example um with this one that's considered an easy one he's lowered some of the numbers on here that make it a little easier which i'll explain them as we get into the actual um playthrough now with this we're gonna want to go ahead and grab a spruance leader task force log game comes with one um, it doesn't come with a pad, unfortunately, it could just come with one. You're going to want to make copies of that, you know, make photocopies. Or if you go to Board Game Geek, there are, um, you can download, again, the designer, Dean Brown has uploaded a lot of resources. You can go ahead and download more of these and print them out for you, which is what I went ahead and did. Now, with that, we're going to go ahead and fill out campaign, initial SO points, and then target SO points. The campaign sheet here is going to tell you multiple things um, that are very important for you to know. It's going to set up basically how your game is going to play. Obviously, you have the name of it, and then that year is going to be important, very important. You also have a description of kind of what's going on, right? A little bit of the narrative, the story. Um, there's things, there's tracks you're going to be using while you play. But what you really want to do when you start is you want to go ahead and pick one of your campaigns, a short campaign or a medium campaign. Now, we are going to pick the short campaign. Now, you're going to go after four targets. 80 SO. What's SO? Special operations points. So basically, though, that's the currency they're going to use to purchase ships and ordnance. So we're going to spend, get to spend 80 SO, 80 special operations points at the beginning to out to purchase ships and outfit them. In addition, for every mission we go on, we get 20 SO points at the beginning of the mission. So that means you can, you know, spend most, if not all, the 80 SO on ships and save um, you don't have to buy ordnance because you're going to get to spend 20 SO on ordnance. At the end of the four targets, you're going to see how many victory points you've accrued compared to this little chart here. It's going to tell you, hey, do you do great, do dismal, or somewhere in between. In addition, when you are purchasing your ships and commanders, these are the skill levels that you're given as part of the campaign. So one skilled, obviously is better than average. You get two average, two green, one newbie. And then as you get um, new um, if you purchase new, more ships beyond the skill levels here, they're going to start at where the asterisk is, which is green. The task force number here is to control how many task force are placed on here um, in these red boxes. And then the activity is going to be a modifier to a roll to see when you move to each of those boxes, what are the odds um, you're going to encounter one of the enemy task forces and also is it going to be kind of a high alert or a low alert. Let's go ahead and place the numbers from here onto our log. All right, let's go ahead and finish our setup of the campaign sheet and of the decks of cards for the game. Looks like there's a lot, and there is a lot of content in the game. However, it is not that difficult. Just go ahead and follow through the rule book. First off, campaign tracks. So we have our campaign picked out. We're going to go ahead and set up the tracks. There's the task force track and the activity track. Activity track, super simple. Just place the activity marker in the farthest left. 
This, as you complete missions, may move to the right. And as it does, it's going to go ahead and lower this number, which is going to have um, reduced chance of you having an encounter or more, and also more likely to be a low-level encounter as opposed to a high-level. Task Force now is a little bit more complicated. You have this goes placed to the far left, pointing to the farthest left number, which in this case is a three. That means you're going to grab three of these enemy task force markers, A, B, and C here. Now we're going to go ahead and roll to see where they're placed on the campaign sheet in the same red box where it says enemy TFs. So you roll three to one, starting off with A, that is four. So three to four, place them right here. And what that's going to matter, let's go for the other ones as well. Um, what that matters and how that impacts the game is that when you get to the numbers where the missions are, you're going to be moving your task force through there. Finally, a two. So he will actually stack on top of um, here. All right. So the campaign tracks are set up. And again, when we are moving through, which we will have our task force marker placed here. And as we're moving towards our mission, but we don't know what the mission is yet, right? So we're not doing any of that yet we're going to have a chance to encounter the enemy task forces. And that's even before we get to our target card. Okay, that's done. Let's set up the card decks. First off, the target deck. And again, by the way, all this stuff, if you're familiar with leader games, it should be pretty simple, pretty easy. Even if you're not, though, it's not that difficult. You're going to go ahead and look through the deck of target cards. And I do have them separated. I have the target cards that I know we're going to use that, we, that are in this campaign. And I have the ones that are not. How do you tell? Remember, I mentioned those numbers, right? 15, 16, 13, 28, etc. All the target cards here have a number in the top left. Just go ahead and find the numbers that are on there. So for instance, I have them ready. 22, right? That's up there. That's on there. 14, that's on there as well. That is going to be your uh, target card deck you're going to be drawing from. So make sure you have that ready. All the other cards you can go ahead and set aside. Next, the encounter enemy cards. Encounter cards is going to be all of them. Um, I don't think there's any special ones. I think it's basically just all of them. You go ahead, you shuffle them up, you get them all ready. And when you're looking at these cards, you know, the one side is going to have, hey, some whatever uh, disbursement of forces you have, and then some information in the bottom generally, and possibly some information on top. Now, the side you're going to worry about initially is this side. We talked about these task force markers. When they first, you put, put them out there, okay, and you move to an area, and you go ahead and see, all right, you're going to roll, and you're rolling against that activity number. So say we had this one right here, you're going to go ahead and roll, and our activity right now is plus two, roll the D10, eight plus two is 10, go ahead and check, activity level is 10, high. What does that mean? That means that you flip it over, and it's going to give you, and I've skipped that one, I went to a different one in the, in the card deck here, but it's going to tell you, okay, line them up according to high, which is five ships, zero submarines. Um, this one would be more submarines. Can you see Intel submarines? And then go ahead and ignore the hit points VP. That's for the um, carrier expansion, I believe. So for the base game, go ahead and ignore that. And we'll get more into these as we actually play um, through the game here. So, all right, so that's the encounter deck. Then we go ahead and look at the enemy cards. Again, very simple. You're seeing, you know, what, who are we fighting? Fighting the Soviets, because there's also the um, Argentinians in the game. So you're fighting the Soviets. And then you are also looking for the year. Now, we have a pretty late campaign, 1988. So the vast majority of Soviet ships and subs are going to be in our game. Not all of them, though. What you do, very simple, go ahead and filter out the ones that are not. You say, well, what do you mean by that, Wayne? Very simple. Look at the enemy cards. There's going to be year in the top right. 1962, 1988. See, just snuck in there. 1979, etc. All of these are going to be in our enemy ship deck. Cards that are not, 1989, 1991, etc. If they're outside of the range of that year, right? So that year earlier, go ahead and remove them. Otherwise, for ships and for enemy subs, they get all shuffled up and you go ahead and place them right there. All right, so we have our cards, we have our target cards, we have our enemy encounter, enemy ship, enemy sub, and the events, all the events, and go ahead and get shuffled up. The events at the beginning of your engagement you're going to read the top one and at the end you'll read the bottom one most leader games i think are three of them these are just two beginning and end nothing in the middle or anything like that so go ahead and get these all shuffled up and you have your event cards ready now you want to set up your draw cups there's an enemy sub draw cup and then the um, damage cup so 
And there'll be another couple we'll explain later. So for enemy subs, because you're not exactly sure what they are, they're handled a little differently than surface ships. We're actually going to create a little cup of these chits, all the enemy sub ones like this go in here. And when you're going to place them out there, and don't worry, we're going to encounter some subs. I'm going to explain how it works. We're going to place them out there. And then when they get detected or they detect somebody, you're going to flip them over. You see there's neutral enemy or nothing. You're going to roll and then it may, may go away or there may be an enemy or it may just be a neutral sub that you um, don't want to attack. So you have those ready. And then finally, the damage chits. These are for when your task force ships are hit. You're going to draw. One side is going to say missile and then tell you, okay, to stress and damage. Or it's going to say, hey, torpedo, you know, torpedo side, lose next action, etc. And take a damage. So, all right. Those are the cards and the cups. We're going to go ahead and dive into purchasing our equipment, which is purchasing our task force ships helicopters, selecting our commanders, and then assigning skill levels to ships and commanders. All right, so with our campaign, we mentioned, you know, we pick the campaign sheet, then we pick whether it's short or medium. We pick short, which remember, gives us 80 SO points to start with. These are the points we're gonna purchase our ships and commanders with. Very simple, our ships, in this game, um, in the base game, are divided up into frigates, destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. And then we have our commanders. There's also helicopters, drones, and support ships. The cost is going to be right next to the frigate, or excuse me, the uh, ship type. So for instance, this USS Vogue, Garcia class frigate, only six SOs, pretty cheap. A couple things you also want to know, you want to pay attention to the year Make sure that is not a year that's passed, which again, we're in 1988. So we have most, if not everything covered. Um, I think everything in this game for the allies is in service um, by 1988 that that's included in the game here. You also wanna check the underneath the year, that is the theater, Atlantic or Pacific. So just make sure we're playing North Atlantic skirmishes. Obviously we want Atlantic ships. We don't want any of the Pacific ships. For instance, USS Kirk, Knox class frigate is a Pacific um, theater ship. All right. We have the cost, we have the year, the type, right, what it is, and there's all the numbers, which we'll cover as we get into the actual um, playthrough of the game. The last thing you want to know, top right, and that's going to be that skill level. So, you know, newbie, right, so that's like the lowest. You have green, that's one up, A, average, S, skilled, and then veteran. So, you know, you have the ones, remember, we get to pick from to start off with, so we get some that are higher ranked to show there is some experience, training, prior skirmishes, etc., and then if you kind of run out of that, you don't have the higher level guys, you're going to have to just recruit at green. But as they go, that number that's next to the letter, that's all the experience points they need to level up. So you get three experience points with him as a newbie. He's going to go ahead and level up to green. All right. So I'm not going to go ahead. Actually, let me show the commanders. So you're going to also recruit a couple commanders. Um, so you get to pick two of them. You don't have to pay for them. Um, you can pay to have them level up, but otherwise you start off, you get to pick two of them and then you just have to keep in mind their skill level, right? So you can't pick the best, the highest rank of say you in here, right? Can't go ahead and pick a veteran has all these uh, actions. You're gonna have to pick a lower ranked one likely, um, but you're going to pick two of them. You're going to send a task force commander out with your task force when they go through each on each of the missions. Um, they're going to have general actions, specialized actions, depending on their rank and they may get an extra action. Um, they get to sign or what they do. Again, we'll cover that as we get into sort of the tactical um, playthrough itself. So I think that's it. Again, you know, we have a helicopters, drone support ships. Not going to cover them. They're just part of the game. You purchase them, etc. I think I'm going to go ahead and pick my ships out. I'm going to do that off camera so you guys don't have to see me fumbling through all the cards. And they'll kind of explain, uh, explain my choices. All right. So I have purchased, I believe, enough ships and the right ships and equipment to run through four missions, four targets... And complete the short campaign with at least a good um, ranking or better. So let's go ahead and look through what I picked, right? So starting with smallest, working to largest. Smallest, the USS Ferris, a Knox class frigate. So what you, what you do is you find the card and there's all the cards. We kind of look through a big stack of them and you saw them in my recon unboxing. There's also going to be a chit for the card. Then that's going to go out on the tactical display here. And your card, like we mentioned before. All the things with the year, the theater, the skill level, their name. You know, see, this is the USS Ferris FF-1094. It's a Knox class frigate. It costs 10 SOs, special operations points. And he has his numbers on the left are going to be all the numbers for 
or excuse me, against, I should say, a ship. In the middle, it's everything against a sub. On the right is everything against aircraft. Um, then you're going to look at some special uh, qualifiers, special keywords. For instance, you can support an uh, SH-2 helicopter, TA, and then cool zero, which you're familiar with leader series means is he gets recover stress or does in the case of a cool zero. Um, you then see based on his stress, what his status is, and then what his numbers will be versus ships, subs, and then aircraft. You also have NM, TD, MD, noise modifier, um, torpedo defense, and missile defense, what number he repairs on, what he operates with, which is oil, and then he can take two hits. Now, all the numbers are different for each one. We'll kind of get into that a little bit more as we do the playthrough, just trying to give you a general idea of what those sort of rankings, all these numbers on there. There's a lot of information on there, but what it all means. So again, USS Ferris, a Knox-class frigate. Then we have two destroyers. We have the USS John Rogers, a Spruance-class destroyer. Spruance leader, got to have a Spruance-class destroyer. Um, the USS Richard Byrd, a Charles Adams-class destroyer. And then finally, the USS Lady Gulf, a Ticonderoga-class cruiser. All the way up to, with the Ticonderoga-class cruiser, 26 SO. So a lot more expensive than that Knox-class frigate, but it can also do a lot more. It can take more hits. Its numbers are better, um, et cetera. All right. Although, one second here. Yep. Okay. Him, I'm going to have to go ahead and adjust. He is not a uh, veteran. He should be skilled. So I picked the wrong card on this because I'm using my one skilled I get for the Ticonderoga class cruiser. We'll just say Lady Golf. I can say that easier. So USS Lady Golf shouldn't be a veteran. He should be skilled. So we'll go ahead and fix that before we get started. Don't want to be cheating now. We also purchased an SH-3 Sea King helicopter. He is going to fly off the um, John Rogers here, helicopter SH-3. And then we have two task force commanders we picked, one with an ASW, anti-submarine warfare focus, and then one with a defense focus, cool zero each, and you can see their stats down here. So pretty simple. We spent, out of our 80, we spent 73, which means we have seven left, which we can roll over, which when we get into, remember, our mission SO points are 20, so we're going to go ahead and get um, 20 plus the remaining 727 for ordnance, other ships, et cetera, whatever we want to buy before we go and go after our first target. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and fill out the log sheet here. All right, we have wrapped up the setup for our campaign in Spruance Leader. I went ahead and put all the information we needed down on our task force log, North Atlantic Skirmishes, 1988 again. Initial SO points are 80 because we are doing the short campaign. Target SO points will be 20, so every target we go on, we get 20 SO points to spend. I have our two commanders we pick, Kinsley and Ewan. I have our four ships. Um, I went ahead and put their levels, so green, you know, their skill level, right? Green, newbie, um, skilled, and average, and then green again. Um, the level XPs, that's how many XPs we need to go to the next level up. No XP's gained yet, of course. They're cool, which again reduces stress. The higher number, the better. Only Richard Bird has any cool right now. Um, let's see, and then there's nothing else on here. Starting SO points again, 80. We use 73, so now we have seven left, and we'll get 20 on our first target. But that is it for the initial setup. So the next video, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. The next one is gonna go into target selection, getting those SO points, you know, outfitting the ordnance on our ships and sending them out and sending them out into the North Atlantic here and seeing what we can do against the Soviets. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully it helped you learn the setup a little bit and at least kind of put things in perspective, maybe even give you kind of an idea of some starting ships. So if you're feeling a little overwhelmed at all the stuff that comes in the base game, this may help with that. Game is not complicated. It's not difficult. You just have to run through the processes. You have to go ahead and just get a handle on the different cards and equipment that comes with it. So Next video, you're going to see us go ahead and launch and uh, work our way through the North Atlantic, headed towards a target. So hopefully you guys watched that one. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know. As usual, guys, thumbs up. And if you've made it this far, if you like this video, if you like any of my videos, love to think I earned your subscription. So until next time, everybody, later.